How do you keep an audience guessing with plot twists and reveals? <laughs> so I, when I was working on the honeymoon phase, I had this uh, mindset of the film as like a Hot Wheel car track, where maybe it's because I grew up with Hot Wheel cars, but um, on the tracks for the Hot Wheel cars, there's like these little spinning motors that will push the car further. So it's like, okay, it goes down the hill, it reaches the bottom, and it reaches a part where you know, naturally the gravity would stop the car because it would run to the end of the track. And then there would be a motor that would push it along further. And throughout the track, there would be all these motors that eventually would, you know, push the car to where it needed to go next. And to me, that's kind of like a good analogy for a script where you have these key scenes in the story, which are your like motors that push the story further. So like the attention grabbing moments, because a lot of points of your story are kind of business where you, you know, your characters are doing things that you know, on a surface level, maybe aren't the most entertaining things to watch, but are important to the story. But you need these motors to, you know, keep the audience guessing and keep them engaged. Um, so in honeymoon phase, we would, you know, throughout the story, when I was outlining, I would pick points where I'm like, ah, I think we need a motor here. And then you come up with a twist or, or something that made sense within the realm of the film to keep the audience guessing. Um, and you, you know, do that by thinking about the characters and where they are at that point in the story and, um, you know, what their belief is, I guess, in their present world. And then how do you flip that on its head by making them question their own reality? Um, and this is a psychological thriller, so I guess that's why some of that terminology is coming into play there. Um, but yeah, the Hot Wheel track thing is kind of how I view a story. <laughs> and so then the, the loop... The, the, that would be toward the end? Yeah, I guess like the big okay, twist, right. uh -huh. you know. Okay. <laughs> or it goes upside down, yeah. okay. And I think that's probably a very Hollywood way of thinking about it, where a lot of blockbuster films have their set piece moments. They would be the motors, you know, or, or the big reveals. Um, and then, you know, in between you have the scenes that are important to the story, but maybe aren't your trailer moments or the things that are gonna leave you like with your jaw dropped because you know you find out that this person was cheating on this person or you know uh, that person's the killer, you know, the, the gear moments. Um, yeah. <laughs> are there any stories you love that are more from the art house genre that aren't Hollywood that you that was a really powerful the way the characters played against one another? I'm trying to think. Most of most of the films that I grew up with were Hollywood films. Um, and independent films, like I, I, as I, you know, matured as a film goer, I started appreciating more independent film as well. Um, but art house film was nothing that I was able to ever, I guess, connect with as a viewer. And that's not to say that I don't respect it as an art form because I think it's it's beautiful and there's so much to be said um, in art house movies. It's just as a viewer, I could never connect with it. So I, it's more of a uh, genre that I respect, but maybe don't necessarily connect with.